hello everybody. Welcome to Covenant Life Church, Monday night discipleship class. We're glad you could join us. And we're going to talk today about how to move the word off the pages of the Bible and get it in your heart so you can Amen. believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Amen. Okay, honey. Amen. Well, welcome. I'm Dr. Apostle Dr. Linda. This is Apostle Jeff. Welcome to Covenant Life Church, and we thank you for tuning in on Monday night. Amen. This is our discipleship course, and uh, we are doing a faith series right now. Amen. So we want to thank you for joining us. Amen. And with that, we'll go ahead and say a word of prayer. Go for it there, honey. Father, thank you for the people of God. Thank you for this opportunity to minister to them. Lord, may this message bless, uplift, build up, and encourage. And may, Lord, you may all the glory, you may get all the glory Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, go for it. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the engrafted word. Amen. <clears throat> engrafted means something has been cut out and replaced with something else. You know, in, in farming, I know... I'm uh, not what you call a farmer, but I've been around farms when I was a kid. Amen. And what we did with the young apple saplings is if there was a part of the plant that was a tree wasn't growing very well, we'd cut that off mm -hmm. and add a new, a new piece, a healthy piece in. Mm -hmm. It was called grafting. Amen. You cut something out and graft something in. Mm -hmm. And... The Bible says that we've been grafted into a Israel's bush. In other words, Israel didn't receive the gospel. Uh, most of them, not all of them, of course. And that they were cut out and we were grafted in. Amen? Amen. And, and so, this is what we call the, the principle of replacement. All right? Mm -hmm. If you would open your Bibles or your iPad or your phone or whatever <laughs> to James chapter 1, James chapter 1, Amen. we're going to look at a, a, some a, a expression here. I'm going to read it first in the Amplified Version and then in the regular New King James Version. Amen. All right, so in James chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 21 in the Amplified, says, so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, gentle spirit, receive and welcome the word which engrafted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. Amen. James 1.21 in the New King James Version, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, I don't want anybody to get confused because we say, you know, uh, you know, we have a revival or an evangelistic meeting, and we say, well, you know, 25 souls got saved last, uh, mm -hmm. last Friday or something like that. Well, Truth is, your soul doesn't get saved. I'm going to explain that. Mm -hmm. What gets saved is your spirit. All right? Amen. So when we say, you know, you know, you say, well, wait a minute. I thought my soul was already saved. No, your spirit is already saved. Amen. Because your spirit is saved, you're saved. Amen. God is a spirit. And God is more concerned about what's in your spirit than anything else. Mm -hmm. And I also, I just want to say this, if you take a, a solid look at what the word says, noticing from this scripture in particular, get rid of uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. Mm -hmm. And in a humble, gentle spirit, receive and welcome the word. See, saints, God is more concerned about what's in our heart and how we teach, how we treat other people than he is about uh, how many times you went to church last year. <laughs> I'm serious. Mm -hmm. uh, he's more concerned with do you love your neighbor as yourself. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, these are the things we want to really be concerned with and focused on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I believe this message is going to help us tonight. Amen. And just a, a quick reminder of the soul when it mentions the soul, right? That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Right. Amen. Your mind, your will, and your emotional realm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we renew our mind. Amen. With the word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 5.23. You might want to write that down and look it up yourself. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless mm -hmm. at the coming of our lord jesus christ notice <clears throat> the three things there spirit soul and body amen now may the god of peace that's what he's god of peace amen not that's turmoil right. not confusion <laughs> Not all the nonsense we see going on nowadays. That's right. You know, everything from the government on down mm -hmm. is in total chaos. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so much uh, yeah. nastiness yeah. Uh, between people like I'm yeah. seeing now. I mean, people are just flat out nasty, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 and anger and mm -hmm. oh my God. And there's, hey, listen, there's some things that have happened out there. The people should be angry about mm -hmm. <coughs> but we should be angry about fixing it not angry at each other and we have to realize too what's really instigating all of it the Bible says we doesn't we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers and wickedness in high places right it's demonic it's all demonic inspired amen amen so, and also, just as a side note, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living mm -hmm. and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, <coughs> and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you'll see in that verse again, let every word be established by two or three witnesses. This is our second witness. Amen. That the, the word is powerful and it ministers to mm -hmm. <laughs> your yeah. soul, mm -hmm. your spirit, mm -hmm. and the joints and marrow. So Amen. what's joints and marrow? That's your body. Mm -hmm. So again, you have spirit, soul, and body. Amen. That's good, John. Now you'll hear people say body, soul, and spirit. But that's not the emphasis that the Bible uses. The Bible always puts the spirit first. Spirit, soul, and body. That's that's the priority. First, right. get your spirit right. Get saved. Right. Amen. Then minister then, to your spirit. Right. Then then we got to your spirit. Right. Then we got to work on our soulish realm because we got to renew our mind with the word of God, yeah. and then and then lastly we got to crucify our flesh. Yes. Amen. Amen. To keep our body under sub subjection. Right. Now the human spirit, when it's at the new birth, when it's born again. It's completely saved right now. It's what qualifies us for heaven. And it's by grace through faith. All right? Mm -hmm. And so, when you get born again, your Holy Spirit is sealed, comes into your, born, into your human spirit, and you're born again. When your physical body can no longer sustain life, your spirit takes your soul to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's point, appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. Well, what is the judgment? I thought my sins were judged on the cross in Christ. They are. <laughs> there is a judgment in the sense that when we die, there is a determination, is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's not God who doesn't know. It's the authorities and principalities and powers are notified, amen, Yeah. that this mm -hmm. person 
His name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's right. Mm -hmm. And God, who is spirit, receives your spirit and your soul. The soul mm -hmm. is your mind, will, emotions, mm -hmm. imaginations, mm -hmm. and, and free will. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, imagination is a soulish function. Yes. You know, emotions are mm -hmm. soulish in the soulish realm. Right. Amen. Amen. So, mm -hmm. the soul is your mind, first of all. Your thought life, your thinking process. Mm -hmm. All right? And it has the ability, your mind does, to receive either from your spirit or from your body. Mm -hmm. Your body is this physical thing. Amen. It's the <coughs> five senses. It's with this we contact the physical realm around us. Mm -hmm. All right? My body is taking in information all the time. You know, I'm, I'm seeing things, hearing things, feeling things. I'm going to have a sip of coffee here, so I'm going to taste something. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Boy, that's strong coffee. Be good, <laughs> Lord. So anyway, that's your body. This body has sinned. Are you listening? Amen. And so when I die, this body goes back to the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. From the dust you came and to the dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. This does. But my spirit, yes. my spirit and my soul go to heaven. Because the wages of sin is death. And this is what dies. So something's got to die. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and I go to heaven never to die again. Amen. Now the unrighteous, the unsaved, when they die, they die twice. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. They that's, die in their physical good. body, and then they have a spiritual death where they're separated from God mm -hmm. and all that's good and live in hell forever. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if that isn't a motivation... To get people saved, I don't know what it is. Yeah, so the death he's talking about is separation from God. Forever. Right, it means that they're still they're still living. Their spirit is going to live on forever. Yeah. Amen. We yeah. are all going to live forever. So it's a matter of where right. are you going to spend you know, eternity. Right, right. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why we always see these Christian tracks. You know, where are you going to spend eternity? Amen. Amen. It's a good question. Amen. Yep. I hope you've got a good answer. You want to make sure that people are saved. Amen. And the only answer that counts is, I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. When you get up to heaven there, and somebody asks you, why, what makes you think you can come in here? I'll say, because I belong to Jesus, and I'm, mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> and I'm saved through his blood. That's right. Amen. Let's see what, if anybody wants to argue with that. Amen. They won't. So please speak, uh, you know, preach the word. Amen. Get mm -hmm. as many saved as possible. Amen. Remember, Apostle Jeff taught us long ago, hell is not meant for people. Hell, right. hell is meant for the demons. The devil and his angels. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we want to get pe people saved. Amen. But, you know, the, hell wasn't created for people. But people go there by the multiplied thousands every day. And the reason God created hell was there had to be a place to keep rebellious spirits mm -hmm. in prison. Amen. And there, well, you can lock them up, but you have to torment them in flame. Yeah, they deserve it. Oh, yeah. They're trying to mm -hmm. inflict us with disease and hardships and, and infirmity and, and kill you and take these, your money oh and, man uh, and they would do that for eternity if god didn't lock them up right and who wants to be in heaven with demons that's right you know they're, they're not so serving god they're not going to heaven yeah amen you know when they afflict us down here they say you're not going where i'm going no you know that and their time is getting shorter and that's why they're getting so stirred up that's right because they see the signs upon the mm -hmm. earth Multiple volca volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, rioting, mm -hmm. war, famine, yeah. plague, uh, 
it's all on an increase. Amen. Amen. And so I don't know if the Lord's coming in my lifetime, <clears throat> but I believe he's coming in our children's lifetime. It's a lot sooner than what, what we uh, might I, think. I believe so. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. uh, I mean, things have to get pretty wicked before God comes and mm -hmm. makes the final judgment. You know, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be but I tell in you the what, day, of the Lord, day of the Lord. It can happen overnight. But that way, you see how fast because wickedness is gaining, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Whoever heard of American people in, mm -hmm. invading their own capital? Yeah, it's ridiculous. That, that's not even... I don't know how that was even thought of. Mm -hmm. Whoever killed, heard of killing. And they thought it was the right thing to do. Oh, and they still do. They're some completely of them. deceived. They're out of their mind. They're completely deluded. And they're crazy. And that's the devil bringing blindness upon people. Yeah, people. deception. You're yeah. right about that. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, honey. I scored one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't get carried away now. <laughs> yeah. He gave me one point. I, I got yeah. one thing right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Amen. So back to engrafting the word. Amen. First Corinthians two sixteen says, "For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Mm -hmm. But we have the mind of Christ." Praise God. Now that means we have mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. to the mind of Christ. Now none of us have all the, the mind of Christ. Not, nobody's brain can handle that. <clears throat> but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. This is oh, what yeah. I mean. Wait, think about what you're reading. That's powerful. Think about what that says. That I can access the mind of God. Right. So if you need a strategy tonight, if you need an answer to your problem, amen, you don't know which way to turn. Amen. Start meditating on the word of God and ask him for the strategy. Amen. Plug in to the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the answer right, right there. Right. Amen. Right. So the soul, your mind, is not saved. Your mind's not saved. Mm -hmm. But needs to be renewed. Yeah. Or transformed. Right. All right, Romans 12, 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. How many want to know the perfect will of God? Amen. How many really mean it? Where you know, just well, if it okay. isn't too costly, I'll take it. <laughs> or if I don't have to do anything, I'll take it. Okay. Or if no. you can just send me a telegram, I'll, I'll be. No, no, okay. no. If you want to know the perfect will of God, the good and acceptable, mm -hmm. perfect will of God. Yeah. You're going to have to renew your mind yeah. with this word of God. With the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to <coughs> think like God thinks. And he thinks like this book says. So also notice, that's the thing that renews <coughs> your mind. The word of God. Right. It's the word of God that changes your thinking. Amen. Mm -hmm. The word does that. Amen. 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 And the body... Mm -hmm. is your physical being. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to fix the flesh. But you can't fix the flesh. You can't mm -hmm. fix your physical body. Yeah. You can only make it submit mm -hmm. to your spirit. Amen. You decided to tune in tonight, so there you are. Your body did exactly what it was told to do. Amen. I came downstairs and sat in this chair. I <laughs> sat here. My body did exactly what I told it to do. That's good. <laughs> you know, my 
body, my flesh, wants to go upstairs and watch a baseball game. <laughs> my spirit wants to be down here serving God. Amen. Well, guess who won? Amen. Uh, all right? That's what it means. Right. All right? That's mm -hmm. the spirit-soul conflict. Right. The soulish part that's unrenewed mm -hmm. is at war with your fleshly desires. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. right. It's also called the flesh spirit conflict. That's what I just said. Oh, okay. Well, you get a point too. I get a point too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Scores on that. <laughs> yes. The flesh has to be made to submit. 1 Corinthians 9.27 the Apostle Paul is talking. Amen. He says, but I discipline my body. Right. He doesn't discipline his, his spirit. He disciplines his body. Or his soul. Mm -hmm. And bring it into subjection. Right. Subjection to what? To the message that his mind is getting from the spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit, through your spirit, mm -hmm. contacts your mind. And now, because of your free will in your soul, you have to make a decision. Am I going to yield to that, the spirit, or am I going to yield to the body? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. At least when I've preached to others... I myself should become disqualified. You know, just because you're a preacher, that doesn't mean you can't be disqualified. <clears throat> what did that just say? Paul said he had to discipline his flesh. He had to do the spirit-flesh warfare. He had to submit his spirit, himself to his spirit. He had to put down his flesh. Amen. And so if he had to do it, I'm pretty sure we have to do it too. Mm -hmm. Now, the only one that ever did that perfectly was Jesus himself. And so we'll always have a need for grace, the grace and mercy and forgiveness of God. But we have to renew our minds and submit ourselves to the Spirit. Are you with me here? Amen. All right, so when he says then, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, I'm glad you said living sacrifice. <laughs> because yeah. I get to make a sacrifice, right. and I also get to stay alive. Right, amen. See, if you were uh, a, a mm -hmm. lamb in the Old Testament law, yeah. you didn't get to live. Yeah. In fact, the lamb died so that the, the one making the offering didn't have to. Amen. Amen. It was a prefigure, a, mm -hmm. a, a picture mm -hmm. of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Amen. All right. So, mm -hmm. one of the greatest dangers to your soul, your mind, mm -hmm. one of the greatest dangers is gossip. Mm -hmm. I talk about this from time to time. Uh, because I have to, because this is one of the most frustrating things to preach on is gossip. Because if you preach about gossip, you can pretty much bet somebody's going to gossip about you. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to be tempted to gossip or something. I want to read Galatians 5.13 in the Amplified. For you, brethren, were called to freedom. Only don't let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness. But through love, you should serve one another. Through love, you should serve one another. Mm -hmm. We went over love Friday. For the whole law, everything, in the Old Testament law is compiled within the one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. But, now, and right after he makes that, so you shall love your neighbor, you're not your fellow church member, <laughs> not your fellow 
Uh, oh, um, come on now. Anything. <laughs> your, your neighbor. Your neighbor. Well, who's the neighbor? The one that you probably really don't like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know. you know, and you know, so, so some smart aleck one day asked the Lord, so who's my neighbor? Like, yeah. I got you now. Right. And he gave uh, them the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yeah, he did. Amen. Yeah. It was the one that had compassion. Yeah. Amen. A neighbor is somebody in need. Mm -hmm. All right. And Amen. so it says here for the law, whole law mm -hmm. is compiled. Right. Within the one precept, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then right after that, he says, but if you bite and devour one another in, in partisan strife, well, what do we got today? Partisan strife. Yeah. And where strife is, there is every evil work. My goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Be careful mm -hmm. that you are not consumed by one another. Now think about that. Wow, that's yeah. we can be consumed. Yeah, we can consume one another. Mm -hmm. You know, the the overall principle that beloved be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man mm -hmm. sows, that shall he also reap. And so don't say and talk about other people if you don't want other people talking about you. That's just... Amen. Amen. And so I highly advise that we need to stop gossiping. Amen. Uh, we really do. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah. Amen. If we always... And, yeah. and here all this mm -hmm. time, you know, I was thinking to myself, well, that's just the sissies that work in an office and things like that. And then uh, when I came out to the job one morning, the Lord said to me, listen very closely at break time. Mm -hmm. You want to know yeah, something? Yeah. Construction guys are twice as bad as anybody in the office. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very human. Everybody talks. Right. And, you know, please. If it isn't something positive or good, think on those things. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we don't need to be repeating things. Mm -hmm. Love covers a multitude of sins. What does that mean? It means love shuts its mouth. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't rejoice when somebody else falls. Yeah. Love, <coughs> love does not repeat a, a matter. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so, that very scripture that I just read to you is Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, you're saved, all right? But are you reaping everlasting life? We don't wait to get to heaven to be reaping everlasting life right now. I'm saved right now. I have everlasting life right now. Amen. The things of the kingdom and of everlasting life should be operating in my life now. Yes, I agree. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, we talked tonight that we said we were going to talk about the engrafted word. How do you engraft or implant the word? Like we were talking about, replacement. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do that? How do you engraft that word? First thing is memorization. Huh. I know everybody just closed their notebook right there. <laughs> well, it's not as hard as you might think. Just even get a, a one scripture or two. Mm -hmm. You know, get something that speaks to your spirit and that you can really cling on to. Mm -hmm. Even if you take one word and meditate on that. I'm talking about one scripture. Amen. Everybody's got at least one. Mm -hmm. Amen. So don't overwhelm yourself. Right. Amen. Keep but it make simple. an effort. 
Yes, amen. Don't get overwhelmed and discouraged, but make an effort. Because it's amen. only the scriptures you memorize are the only ones you truly know. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are in your mind, soul, mm -hmm. for the spirit to use. Mm -hmm. Amen. Memorize the scriptures and it'll be in a place where your spirit can use it. Amen. Now, I'll give you an example. I was a job one day. The guy I was working with did something. I was ready to blow my stack. Well, I had, as a spiritual exercise <laughs> recently, had committed to memory. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 3 through 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. Wow, that's Amen. A tough one. Love, love does not think of evil. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Doesn't it, you know? Accepts a wrong suffered, hopes all things, believes all things, mm -hmm. endures all things. Oh God! Yeah, do we have to endure? endure? I have to endure. Are you sure? Endure. <laughs> I want to punch this guy in the head. I don't want to endure. <laughs> but mm -hmm. when I was getting angry. In my mind came, love is patient, love is kind. And I'm thinking, oh, God. You know. Do you, do you think God was, was speaking to me? Do you think that was the voice of God? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, I had, then I had mm -hmm. the ability to, the, the power to calm down, mm -hmm. to get a grip, mm -hmm. and to be kind. Amen. And to be patient. It did not write that down as something I'm going to get even for. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that worked? Amen. I memorized that, so that was in my mind. My mind had been renewed in that area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, when something happened, the Spirit had something that it could give to my mind that I would recognize and understand and put into practice. Mm -hmm. And the result was the devil didn't get me that time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Won that one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the first to engraft the word is to memorize. Maybe you have a financial need. I've had financial needs. I've memorized. My God shall meet all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, I still know it. Amen. Amen. When I get in a tough spot, I said, my God shall meet all my needs Amen. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not by my job, not by my strength, <coughs> not by my investments, not by my good, good ideas, mm -hmm. but by Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, what happens if you, I just keep going. I get other scriptures Amen. that promise the same thing. I look and make sure I've met the condition of the promise. Mm -hmm. And then I claim it. Because this word is infallible. It's powerful. Amen. Mm -hmm. It has, gives us discernment. Amen. Amen. And so when I memorize it, then I meditate in it. So instead of worrying about how I'm going to get the money I need, instead I'm meditating on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Well, how's God going to meet all your needs? I have no idea. That's his problem, not mine. My job is to believe mm -hmm. and speak what he has said. Mm -hmm. That's my part. Amen. Getting it done is his part. Mm -hmm. So maybe he'll come along and say, why don't you call so-and-so? And they tell you, and you, so you call them just to say hello. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they tell you about uh, somebody who's hiring somewhere. Amen. <coughs> That's right how it, the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Yeah. You never know when, you're, when you obey the Spirit of God where it's going to end. Yeah, and, and what it's going yeah. to lead to. And he's really big on line up on line. Yeah, and Amen. he doesn't tell you, hey, Jeff, <laughs> this is real important. Yeah. Do this. Yeah. 
you know, the first time I saw Linda and I was going to ask her to, she wanted to ride, you know, home from church and, uh, and to have some breakfast. God didn't say to me, Jeff, this is the one. Get with it, dude. Go up there. Right? He just said, hey, Jeff, yeah. why don't you give that girl a ride? See, just give yeah. that girl a ride. It's so important that, that we hear and obey even the first command. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that's the way he is. He doesn't lay it all out for you. Mm -mm. It's a walk of faith. You have to hear and obey even little things. Yeah. If you obey in little, remember he says that if you're know, faithful in a little thing, mm -hmm. you'll be faithful in much. That's it. So God is really big on those mm -hmm. little things. See, so, and and you know, just minute, and the devil wants to tell you that little things are not important. That's not important. That's even unscriptural. Amen. See, you know when God yeah. speaks, it's not a little thing. No, it's not. He's <laughs> God of the universe. Yeah. When that, has God said listen a to that. thing? Listen to that. <laughs> See, that is real deception. Yeah. They'll say, oh, don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about that. Right. Okay. But yeah, God is watching for your faithfulness. Amen. Because if you're faithful in the little thing, he'll mm -hmm. give you something real big because he knows you're going to be faithful in right. that big thing. And he's directing you. Amen. Amen. And he doesn't tell you everything mm -hmm. because, you know, you're not the only one. That's watching. The demons are watching too. Amen. You know, I want to tell you something. We're checking out our building almost daily. Right. That's a little thing right now. Yeah. Okay. I it's mean, also a pain in the neck. Well, <laughs> but it's our blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. If we're faithful in that little thing, we're going to be faithful in something bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you always want to demonstrate faithfulness with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Always. It'll pay off every time. Amen. And if you memorize the, the scriptures, now I'm not saying memorize the whole Bible. You know, some people can memorize easier than others. Yeah. There was a uh, minister, I, I don't think he's, I think he went home to be with the Lord, but he, he, Jack Van Impe, mm -hmm. he had oh, this wow. Bible memorized. Wow. Wow. I think oh Kenneth, man, the guy was incredible. Yeah, I think Kenneth Hagin, wow, uh, came close to it too. Yes, these guys are incredible. Yeah, well, you know, okay, they're incredible, but they did two things. They had a natural gift for memorization, but then they took the time to study and memorize it. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Tiger Woods was a gifted athlete, a mm -hmm. fabulous golfer. Mm -hmm. But he didn't sit in the house watching cartoons. He right. was out driving golf balls, pitting, right. chipping, putting. Studying it. Studying it, looking at it. Yeah. He knows Teaching the golf it. course at Augusta. He can tell you the distance from every tee to every gut hole. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they even pay attention to the wind, to the environment, yeah. to the temperature, you know, Humidity. The, to the type of uh, golf club, you know, yeah. what it's made out of. You know, all of it. Yeah. Every every part of that yeah. is is critical. Yeah. Remember that time I, I, I bought that titanium driver? <laughs> I thought, hot dogs, boy, I'm gonna drive this thing three hundred yards now. I drove it three hundred yards, but <laughs> hundred and fifty of it was to the right. <laughs> so back in the day when he didn't <clears> throw <throat> his back out. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't try it. I'd, I'd have to go to a doctor if I went to try to golf now. Amen. 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 <laughs> and all golf did was ruin a perfectly good evening's walk in the woods. That's all it did. That's basically why we made it get out there and, and be mm. in the fresh air. Yeah. Amen. We tried it for a while. Yeah. And then it got crowded and expensive. And it's too expensive. Right. So if I'm going to be... And it wasn't fun because if the ball didn't go where it was supposed to go, then you're out chasing it. Right. <laughs> and there's always some goofball right in front of you that can't hit the green for... the. I could at least stay on the green most of the time. Yeah. You know, it might took me four strokes to do it, but I... You know, you know but... but... There's always somebody that every shot goes off in the woods. But the point was, you know, <coughs> even even Tiger, as as uh, gifted as he is, mm -hmm. he had to study. Mm -hmm. Amen. He had to practice. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I, I sure hope he's all right. Well, we're, we're praying him through too, honey. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, memorization. Don't compare yourself to someone else. Memorize, listen to me, memorize what you can memorize. Mm -hmm. Whatever your need is, find the scripture. Meet the condition of the promise and believe for the answer. Mm -hmm. And one of the way, ways you can graft it into your heart mm -hmm. is memorization. Praise God. You know, I you know, you know in, in high school we had to, especially history class, you had to memorize certain things. You know, and, and so I always felt like well, once I get out of school, I'm not going to memorize anything again <laughs> as long as I live. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, memorize things so you could take a test. You know, like when did the War of 1812 start? <laughs> you know, yeah, right. <clears throat> so memorization number two, mm -hmm. meditation. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. It means thinking intensely. That, that theme's been coming up quite a bit. It's reading the verse mm -hmm. out loud. It's reading the verse out loud. Yeah. Where does faith work? Mm -hmm. Heart, mouth. Amen. Reading the verse out loud. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've had people at a red light stare at me because I'm sitting in the car talking to myself. This is before we had cell phones. Because now everybody's talking to themselves. Right. But back then you were, you know, a little looney tune if, if you were talking to you, went around talking to yourself. I was talking to myself all the time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's meditation. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it. Dear saints, it's not quantity, mm -hmm. it's quality in reading scripture. Mm -hmm. Think about what you're reading. Amen. Like, for example, But let him ask in faith <coughs> with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let him ask in faith. Ask God. Ask in faith. Mm -hmm. How do you ask in faith? By not doubting. With no doubting. How do I do that? Well, to not doubt means that I believe. I, it's a decision. I decide yeah. I'm going to believe what right. God has said. Right. Just believe it. Amen. So memorization, mm -hmm. meditation. Mm -hmm. Practice it mm -hmm. is the third one. Practice it. There wouldn't have been any point when the Lord spoke to me, love is patient. Love is kind. Mm -hmm. Amen. If I had gone ahead and just decided I wanted to get angry, bless, bless God, I'm entitled to it. <laughs> I had to practice it. Yeah. Put the word says into your life by practicing it. Mm -hmm. All right? So we meditate on, on it. Right. First Timothy 4.15, meditate on these mm -hmm. things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we want to meditate. Amen. Mem memorize, meditate, mm -hmm. and then put it into practice. Amen. It is the word that has the power to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Jesus said. That's right. Sanctify them. Set them apart mm -hmm. by your truth. Amen. Well, we have to mm -hmm. know the truth to be set free. We have to know the truth to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. Amen. Watching television, you know, six hours, eight hours a day is not going to have any eternal value. <laughs> we need, you know, you're not going to go to heaven and they're not going to ask you what was on CNN. <laughs> Amen. You have to take the time. Amen. And you got to read the word. Meditate. Right. Amen. Amen. Memorize. Meditate. Right. Practice it. That's it. 
It's the word of God. Right, and, and it's eternal. Mm -hmm. It is eternal. And as we said last Friday, mm -hmm. the Lord was telling me that we have to start exerting our authority mm -hmm. because God has given us authority in the earth. And we're bound to God by blood covenant. Mm -hmm. So when we believe in our hearts and say with our mouth, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Now this is how you get it in your heart. You engraft mm -hmm. it. All right? We memorize, meditate, practice. Mm -hmm. All right? Because words are the seeds of spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. Words are a start the process of life. Yes. No one has a choice of whether or not you live by words. But you do have a choice of whose words you live by. Amen. The 12 spies went out. Mm -hmm. And they all saw the same land, the same giants, the same obstacles, the same problems. Mm -hmm. Ten came back with an evil report. Two came back and said, they're bred for us. Mm -hmm. their, their help is gone. Right. We are well able. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a question of whether you're going to live by words or not. It's mm -hmm. a question of whose word are you going to live by. Mm -hmm. Words empower the spirit realm, mm -hmm. both good and evil. When you were born again, your born again experience was activated by words. If you believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Amen. Romans 10, 19. Amen. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. The confession mm -hmm. of Jesus as your Lord changed your eternal destiny. Think about that. When I pray yeah. to receive Jesus as my Lord, my words change my eternal destiny. That's right. That's How why much I'm... more proof do we have need to, to see that words have power? That's why the gift of prophecy is so critical Amen. also. Amen. Amen. Every prophecy you have changes your life in some kind of positive way. Every word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because every word from the throne is life-changing. Amen. Amen. The spirit realm was created and is controlled by words. Mm -hmm. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. See, God calls you holy. That's why, in his mind, you are holy. And when you get to heaven, you'll be holy. Because I was holy here? Well, I'm trying to be. But that isn't the point. What makes me holy is what God has said in his word. Hello. Amen. Amen. This is how God operates, and it's how he expects us to operate. The devil knows this and has from the beginning been working to get our hearts and words out of agreement with God. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard. It's not hard. Just start thinking like the world does. Yeah. And you'll start talking like them. Yeah, that's right. Be conformed to this world's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And it won't take long before you'll be in the same mess they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. When the spirit and the bride say come, when we are saying the same thing that heaven is saying, there is an open heaven between me and the throne. That's what that scripture means. Mm -hmm. When the spirit and the bride, who's the bride? We are, are the, the bride. bride. Amen. Okay, so when the spirit, which is God, mm -hmm. and us, when we're coming into agreement mm -hmm. with the spirit, okay, that's what that mm -hmm. scripture means. Right. And he says, come, because we're in agreement. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Revelations 22, 17. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus tell Peter? Mm -hmm. Come. Amen. 
Right on. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears, mm -hmm. okay, say, come. Say what the spirit is saying. Let him who hears say, come. And Amen. let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life mm -hmm. freely. This Amen. is when breakthrough and miracles happen. Amen. When we know what the spirit is saying and when we say the same thing. There's another We're power tip. Mm -hmm. with heaven's will and desire. That's right. And so when I speak it, it happens. Amen. God doesn't answer just words, but words that are backed up by practice. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like faith without works is dead. That was an anointed word right there. Prayer without the practice of biblical principles is mm -hmm. pointless. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. saints, your blessings don't depend on anybody else but you. Amen. Others can impede it sometimes or delay it. Mm -hmm. But your blessings, in the end, not even the devil can stop it. If Amen. he did, he could, you wouldn't be saved. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So prayer is answered by a life of sowing and obedience. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We memorize it. We meditate in it. Mm -hmm. And then we practice it. Yes. Amen. So I challenge you this week to memorize 1 Corinthians 13, Amen. 4 through 8. That's good. Oh, we're getting a homework assignment. Love suffers long. Okay. And is kind. Mm -hmm. Love does not envy. Mm -hmm. Love does not parade itself. Mm. It's not puffed up. Mm -hmm. mm. Does not behave rudely. Amen. You know, if your mm -hmm. husbands and wives, mm -hmm. just because you're married doesn't give you permission to be rude. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I just feel impressed to, to make a little side issue here. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Side note, yeah. It, yeah, a little, what do they call it? Yeah. Going down a rabbit trail or a something? A detour. A detour? <laughs> no, I'm going to just make a little detour here. Amen. Say thank you. Yeah, and please. And and be appreciative. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear. That dinner was delicious. Yes, it was. We had a good steak tonight. Yeah. Amen. It was very good. Right. Or, thank you, dear, for doing the laundry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Bless God, you're always supposed to do the laundry. <laughs> what verse says that? Amen. Praise just God. Just say, thank you, dear. I appreciate that. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, yeah. Linda did the uh, did our taxes for this coming year, and it was a booger too. You know, <laughs> I mean, doing taxes is never easy. Yeah, we have. To I made it a point to say thanks, Bill. I'm glad yeah. you did the taxes <laughs> because I don't know how. So I did the taxes, and and he did the cookie. Yeah. It was a a good work share split. Yeah, and the steaks were good. <laughs> yeah. So love suffers long and is kind. Amen. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Mm -hmm. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Mm -hmm. Does not seek its own. Ooh, there's another good thing. Yeah. Especially in marriage. Does not seek its own. Mm -hmm. Here's another good. Is not provoked. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Man. Thinks no evil. Right. Mm -hmm. Does not rejoice in inequity, but rejoices in the truth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, mm -hmm. endures all things. Right. <clears throat> Love never fails. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. when we love, we are moving in the same characteristic of God himself. Mm -hmm. If you're ever wondering what the will of God is or what to do, do the most loving thing you can think of, and you won't miss God by much. That's right. Amen. All right? Mm -hmm. So memorize. Mm -hmm. Meditate. Practice. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Love suffers long and is kind. Amen. Love does not envy. 
Love does not parade itself. Mm -hmm. Is not puffed up. Mm -hmm. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in inequity. But rejoices in the truth. Mm -hmm. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. If you love, you'll never fail. Amen. And so, and then there's other scriptures. And let me just make an offer to you. If you're having trouble <coughs> finding a scripture <coughs> to stand on mm -hmm. for the issue that you have, mm -hmm. call us, mm -hmm. either Pastor Linda or myself, mm -hmm. and we'll find it for you. Mm -hmm. And we'll pray with you. And we'll stand with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're out there out all by yourself mm -hmm. trying to do this. And sometimes you need help. Amen. And we're here to help you. Amen. And so with that, I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for tonight. Yes, God. And for the engrafted word. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us to meditate, memorize, meditate, and then act upon your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to transition into the prophetic tonight. And uh, we already have a prayer request, so honey, I'm going to let you, prayer request? Let you uh, pray for that, that person there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. This is Marissa from Fomento. This is from her. This okay. is the, the prayer request is I'm taking right care there. of my mom right now, so look forward mm -hmm. to the replay. <coughs> Asking for continued prayer for my cervical spine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray yes. for Marissa's spine. Yes, God. Lord, that it be aligned. Every mm -hmm. every disc will be in appropriate position. Mm -hmm. Her her backbone will snap into mm -hmm. shape, the proper shape. Yes. There'll be no pinched nerves. Yes. There'll be no pressure. Mm -hmm. There'll be nothing wrong with her spine. We pray for her cervical spine. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Yes, Amen. God, we just command the healing right now. By Amen. stripes, we are healed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to shift into the prophetic. Amen. Father, we just stir up the prophetic and the apostolic in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All right, this first word is for Marissa uh, Fermento. Thank you, honey. Nice job. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for Marissa. Uh, and, and daughter, the Lord says that I see your prayers, says the Lord. I see your faithfulness. And the Lord says that I am moving on your behalf, says God. And the Lord says that I am even uh, resolving some issues within the family unit, says the Lord. There's been some things that have really hurt you in days gone by. And God says that I am removing that hurt. And the Lord says that I am even giving you a healing in this hour, says the Lord. And the Lord says that the days ahead will not be as bad as, as the years that you've already experienced. For it doesn't even my words say that the latter is greater than the former. And the Lord says that you've been concerned about your finance. And God says that I'm also bringing finance to you in this season, says the Lord. And the Lord says that this is a season of hope. It is a season of greater joy and greater hope. And surely you will have both, says the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release that to Marissa right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And this next word is for uh, Dr. Bates. Amen. Father, we just lift up Christina Bates to you right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we stir her in the apostolic prophetic. And the Lord says, Daughter, uh, I am continuing even to heal you in this season. And the Lord says that you're called to greater works. And the Lord says that the greater works are going to start manifesting in your life in different areas of your life. And the Lord says, it's, it's almost like, I just see you, Christina, that you've been kind of marinating. Uh, you've been reading, you've been studying, you're doing different things. There's a great healing that's been going on for some time. And you're marinating in a good way. Amen. And the Lord says that I'm causing my anointing to come upon you uh, to a greater dimension in this season, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to start linking you up again with other Christians 
and other uh, organizations. Um, there's there's going to be different people coming into your life, and the Lord says that there's going to be a resurgence uh, of the anointing in your life coming to a new level. And when you uh, interact with these other people, whether they be clients or whatever they are, God says that the, you're going to have an unction that's going to come upon you to, to minister to them in some kind of fashion. So the Lord says, be sensitive to the leading of the, of the Spirit and get ready for that new dimension of the Spirit coming upon you. For I am stirring you in the prophetic apostolic in this season, says God. And I'm also coming upon your daughters in new ways. The anointing is coming upon them, and there's going to be a greater manifestation of my anointing upon their life, says the Lord. So get ready, says God. And the Lord says that um, because, and the, and the healing has been continuing, and because of that, there's greater joy coming into your life in the days ahead, says the Lord. So Father, we just come against any type of depression, any type of oppression, that's coming upon her or her family in Jesus name and Lord we just stir the apostolic prophetic to that new level in Jesus name and we call forth even new Christian friendships in Jesus name new connections even through work and Father we thank you even that she's still in the school of the Holy Spirit amen and Lord I just thank you for greater revelation coming to her and her children and greater anointing in Jesus' name. And we release that in Jesus' name. Amen. This next word is for Jamie Fuentes. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for Jamie. And Jamie, I'm just hearing the Lord say that I'm doing a greater work in your life. And God says, I haven't forgotten all the things that I promised to you. And so the Lord says, stay in the word. Meditate in the word, even as you heard tonight, says God. Keep stirring the word in your spirit. And the Lord says that there's going to be a greater manifestation of the anointing that's going to spill out to your family, to you, even into your finance. And something is going on with career. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just stir that right now in Jesus' name. And we release the anointing afresh and anew in all those areas in Jesus' name. Amen. And this word is for James Mullen. Amen. All right, sir, I just hear the word say that uh, the, the Lord is stirring you in that new way. And God says, I'm opening up new opportunities for you in the days ahead uh, for ministry and career. And uh, there's some a aspects of job uh, right now that are going to be improving for you. And the Lord says that this is a season where I want you to consider uh, new skill sets, says the Lord, and even pursuing new uh, credentialing. So the Lord says, get in that prayer closet and seek me about new credentialing. And the Lord says, I'm going to provide new opportunity for you, says the Lord, for with you I am well pleased. And so, Father, we release that to James Mullen right now. In the name of Jesus, we stir him in Jesus' name. And, Father, we release an anointing. For new skill sets, greater revelation, and greater ability to hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. And we seal it over him in Jesus' name. Amen. This word is for Shalina Williams. Amen. Shalina, I'm just hearing the Lord say is very pleased with, with you. And I hear the Lord say, daughter, you've been ministering to your family. And God says, keep it up. And the Lord says that. Uh, your labor is not in vain. Their lives are changing. Everyone is changing for the better. And the Lord says, keep speaking the word of God into the atmosphere over your family. And you're going to see miraculous things take place. Amen. Remember that it's seed time and harvest. And so you got to keep speaking the word every day. Because remember, it's like watering that plant. And as you water the plant, it's eventually going to sprout and it's going to grow. And that's what the word does. It keeps working on people. Amen. Just like you're watering them. Amen. So keep on. Don't give up. Don't get weary and well-doing. So, Father, we just thank you for Shalina. Amen. And, Father, we just cause, uh, we just um, 
uh, Lord, right now we call forth finance to come into her from the north, south, east, and west in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for healing. We release healing to her in that new way, in those new areas within in her life in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If there's anybody out there today who would say, Pastor Linda, I, I want to get saved. I don't know where I'm going to spend eternity. Amen. We always want to give you the opportunity. Amen. So just follow me in this quick prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus' name. And if there's anybody out there who would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, we also want to give you the, the, the opportunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release an anointing right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And even those who want another infilling, we release it to them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, praise God. I'm hearing the Lord say to pray again for feet. If you have a foot problem, Let's believe God for complete healing right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release healing uh, for feet and ankles. In Jesus' name, for bones, plantar fasciitis. I just come against arthritic pain, even anywhere in the body, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we release healing right now. By his stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name. And Father, I just thank you, Father. Yes, God, that Lord, you're... I have given us a determination to meditate on your word, to renew our mind with the word of God. And so, Father, we release uh, uh, even a fresh revelation of your word upon the people right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Okay, I want to invite you, uh, please go to our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. And there's a donate button on the front page. We appreciate any donation tonight. Amen. We want to thank you very much for all of your faithful prayer support and all the all the donations. Amen. Praise God. We have another inspection coming up on Wednesday. Please be in prayer for us. Amen. We're almost done. Amen. We're on the home stretch. Amen. So please keep praying for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, and if you're not on our mailing list, uh, please uh, type in your email list or your email address right now so Miss uh, Kavinda can capture it tonight. Amen, and we'll put you on our mailing list. I want to remind you that this coming Sunday, March 14th at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, Apostle Enos and Diane Chamberlain are going to be Zooming in. Amen, uh, excuse me, they're, they're going to be on Facebook. Amen, at 2.30 they are a dynamic ministry couple. Amen. You don't want to miss that this coming Sunday. Amen. It's going to be a special event. Praise God. They're going to be prophesying and praying for people. Amen. And they also see miracles in their ministry. They're a dynamic. Amen. I want to remind you that tomorrow night is Prayer Tabernacle at 7.30 p.m. And then, of course, we also have our Friday night table caught at 7.30 and Sunday from 1 to 2 uh, Eastern Standard Time is Prophetess Dr. Shayla with our prophetic class. Amen. And then again, uh, Apostle Enos and Diane at 2.30 this Sunday. Okay, everybody, want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. On behalf of Apostle Jeff and I and all of our people, we, we want to thank you for joining us. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release an anointing right now. We claim Psalm 91, no plague will come nigh our dwelling. And Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Father, we stir up the people tonight. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let us come into agreement, Father, with your Spirit. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that, that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in tonight. Amen. Praise God. Good, good night.